Hello guys, how's it going? It's Peter here. In this video I'm gonna try to explain you why some players do and love chest running, what drops you can get, what old school means for weapons, what tricks and tips there are to maximize treasure hunter title as quickly as possible. Let's get started. First of all let me start by saying a few things about chests in Guild Wars in general. Because as you probably noticed there are many different chests in the game. Uh, for example, we have the locked chests, they always require a lock pick to open. Then we have different regional chests, which can be opened by the perfect keys or with a lock pick. Then we have those treasure chests in Nightfall or the hidden treasures in Eye of the North dungeons, which are never locked and you can open them without using any keys. And of course, there are endgame chests like the ones in the Underworld, Vision of Wu. And, and we have the Zaishan chest which requires a Zaishan key to open and some mission or quest chests. So now that it's clear for everyone, I can tell you which chest to, to open if you want to work on your treasure hunter title. Well, in general, all lo locked chests are good, so basically in hard mode anywhere you are and see one chest, go ahead and open it with a lockpick. Anyway, a chest has to be high-end chest to count for the title, meaning the key required to open uh, has to be 600 golds or more. For example, in Prophecies, Shiver Peak chest, uh, you know the Drocknor's Forge area, the Miner's chest uh, in Saros Furnace, and the Ring of Fire Islands are, are all good. In Factions, all chests in the Karzik, Luxon area, Raizu Palace, Deep or Argos count for the title, and in Nightfall all chests from Vabion. And of course chests in the Underworld and in FOW also count. Anyway, Treasure Hunter, Lucky, Unlucky and Wisdom titles go hand in hand, so you can work or even for account based titles at once. So Treasure Hunter is basically opening chests or picking up golden eggs during Eastern. 10 key is the max, so either you have to open 10 key chests or to pick up 10 key golden eggs uh, while farming. Lucky and unlucky are two very similar titles. When you break a luck pick you get unlucky points. Uh, if the luck pick doesn't break then you get lucky points. Sadly maxing them, especially the lucky title takes more time than maxing the treasure hunter. And uh, that's, that's why people do 9 rings during the, the festival events. And uh, the Wisdom title is about identifying gold items, so these four titles are really connected to each other. Now, if you are wondering how fast can one maximize Treasure Hunter for instance, let's do some math together. Later in this video you will see that I ranked the different routes by time and I can say that one chest per minute is an achievable ratio. So we need 10,000 chests, that's uh, roughly 10,000 minutes which is uh, around 167 hours. Now, if you're willing to open chests for one hour per day, that's 167 days. Uh, but it really depends on how much time you have. Back in the days, I tried to open 100 a day, so I maxed the, the title a uh, bit more than in three months. Uh, it may sound way too long, but if you carry lockpicks with you, uh, by doing basically anything in the game, even vanquishes, missions, anything, you can open many chests and uh, reduce time by much. Okay guys, let me show you a few tricks and tips now, which can help you uh, maxing the treasure hunter title. First of all, use the portal trick. It's quite simple, you go through the portal, uh, but instead of starting your run, come back and after get that go ahead and do your run uh, normally but uh, when you finish your run don't map travel back just use the slash resign command instead uh, because this way you can save seconds everyone uh, since you arrive close to the portal and you don't have to walk back my next tip is to always look around because chests can spawn in many di directions and if you're only looking ahead, you will miss some of the chests. 
Another tip is to display all item and NPC names and to do that simply go to the options menu uh, or press F11 then in general settings tick the two last options. This way you can always see chests and enemies uh, around you and you can prepare before harder runs so you can use shadow form or your elite skill before running into those harder enemies. And if we are already in the setting, you should, you should know that there is an option to add a hotkey for targeting a chest. Um, personally, I like to use it if I'm lazy to look around all the time. Uh, I simply click my hotkey a couple of times and I can find chests with it easily. Anyway, luck picks are quite pricey, 1.5k at merchants, so guys never buy from them. Instead, buy from players or if you are a member of a big Corsic or Luxon alliance, which has a town, you can buy from those uh, Corsic or Luxon uh, merchants for 1.2k each. And, and probably the most important thing is a good running build, since as you will see some of the runs are quite difficult, especially in hard mode. And in general spell preven prevention skills like Shadow Form, Vow of Silence uh, are very useful. Um, you will need running skills like Dash, Dark Escape, uh, and you will also need teleporting skills because the, the monsters can block your way uh, like Heart of Shadow, Death Charge and, and PV skills like I'm Unstable Build, Warfare Stability are also very useful and, and I like to use a shield set uh, this way my character can survive a bit longer since um, it make my armor go higher and, and I don't really recommend to use many superior runes on your armor because they reduce uh, overall HP. And my last tip for you guys that uh, to use heroes because with incoming and fallback you can run 33% faster and they are also good mid shields so you can even flag them into enemies and, and use it to your advantage. And now comes the question if you should open chests in normal mode or in hard mode. Well, in general hard mode yields bigger profit because of uh, more gold items, elite tomes and the bigger chance for weapons with the max damage and perfect mods. But uh, lockpicks break many times. On the other hand, in normal mode there is a tiny chance for Q8 items from the right chests and you r retain your lockpicks more often. Anyway, stati statistics shows that around every 200 drop is a Q8 weapon, sword, shield or, uh, or focus item. You could ask me why are Q8 weapons good at all? Well, most of the times their value comes from rarity. Collectors are willing to pay a lot of money for them because they are super rare and they can show off. But sometimes they have an advantage over Q9 items. For example, you can save uh, some attribute points with them since Q8 uh, gives max damage with 8 on a certain attribute. Mm, others said on wiki that you can do more damage with the Q8 sword than with the Q9 one, but it's debatable and personally I doubt it since both has the same base damage. Uh, other example uh, is a Q8 shield which gives max armor at uh, Eight of a certain attribute and that can be useful in PvP for instance. By the way the stats you get on drops uh, really depends on the level of chests because the chest has a level and meaning Q8 chest has to be level 17 to 21 and chest level is mostly related to enemies level. Ok guys so now that you know what the Q8 weapons are I can talk about old school weapons because I believe that's another thing many of you doesn't really know. As you probably noticed in factions and in prophecies the loot from chests doesn't contain any inscriptions, uh, meaning those items have an inherent mod um, that's inside them automatically. Uh, because of that those mods are impossible to salvage and that's why we call these weapons old school. So for example, this weapon is, is old school, just 
look how I can salvage the the 15 slash 50 mod from it. So if you're doing chest runs, that's why most of us do them in prophecies and in factions. Since old school weapons with nice mods are extremely valuable, collectors pay many arm races for a nice drop. Uh, so basically it's it's because of rarity. But finding one old school item with perfect mods is not easy and you get to be very very lucky. Okay guys, so at this point you could ask me what items should should I keep? Well, I made this spreadsheet, uh, but I don't want to read it out. Go and stop the video here if you want to. In general, rarity specify the price. The rarer the item, the more money you get. And back in the days before uh, Factions was released in 2006, some Q7 weapons existed with uh, max uh, damage. But those items don't drop anymore, obviously. Only certain collectors have a few laying in their storages. However, in my opinion, they look uh, amazing. Okay. Alright, now it's time to focus on the different chest runs. Uh, I tried to collect the most well-known farms, but it really depends on the individual. So everyone mixes their own places and routes. Um, and in reality, you can open chests in any of the explorable areas. But, uh, but I really focused on eff efficiency, because I wanted to make a ranking by time. So in the next few minutes I'm gonna show you all these routes, but before I do that, let me grab the moment to say thank you for some people who helped me making this video. So thank you Chevy, thank you Plaiki, thank you Stance, and thank you Char Wagner King. You guys are amazing, I really appreciate all the help you gave me. And I'm gonna start by locations with the minimum of chests and the last one will be the best for treasure hunter. Uh, there will be a spreadsheet about each of them. You will see my times and how many chests I found in each run and the really detailed drop data on some of the runs. And anyway, I will put the builds I used into the description and also the timestamps just to make sure that you can click to your favorite route and as always, thank you for watching and good luck with the opening.
Thank mm-hmm. you.